So, hello again, Grade 9. This is Mr. Hunter with uh, the final little podcast for your test. And this is going to be on um, giant molecules and the differing properties of molecular and giant covalent and, as it were, ionic or giant ionic substances. So I'll start off with uh, a look at the giant covalent stuff. Oh, and I'm also going to do a little bit about um, molar mass of compounds. So what I'm going to do now is get this to write first. So firstly, I'm going to do uh, giant covalent molecules. Uh, then I'm going to look at properties of the different structures. And then I'm going to look at... Uh, molar mass compounds etc like working out the mass of compounds okay okay giant covalent molecules you need to know the structure of diamond graphite and silicon dioxide These are all giant covalent molecules. And you also need to know the structure of the simple sodium chloride structure, which is an ionic, simple ionic lattice. And strictly speaking, it is also what you would call a giant structure. Giant structures don't have definite numbers of atoms or ions to them. They go on indefinitely. It would be wrong to say they go on forever, because obviously they stop. But there's like a million, gazillion, gabillion atoms in a diamond uh, structure, for example. So, diamond. Each carbon atom is bonded to four others by strong covalent bonds. You've got to say that. Each carbon bonded to four others by strong covalent bonds. Forming a giant tetrahedral covalent lattice. This makes it super strong, or super hard, I should say. It also makes it has a very high melting point. And the giant nature of the tetrahedral structure means that it is translucent and that light can go through it. It is totally and utterly insoluble in water. Because it's too big, the bonds don't break up. Graphite. Graphite is not the same as diamond. In graphite, each carbon atom is bonded to three others, not four others, three others. Oops. Three others in a hexagonal layer shape. So the layers are layers of hexagons. Now the layers of hexagons, in the layers of hexagon, each carbon is bonded to three others by strong covalent bonds.
But between these layers of hexagons, there are weak forces. And these weak forces are where the next are between the layers of the carbon atoms. So this is the layer below. Okay. And these are the weak forces between layers. And there's a name for these weak forces. These weak forces are called van der Waal forces. Because they are weak, graphite is soft. When you write with a pencil, the layers of graphite just come off on your pencil tip. Also, because of this layer formation, and because each carbon is only bonded to three others, within the layer formation, you have the area for each atom having one spare electron because carbon has four out of electrons and if you only have three used in bonding then this spare electron can go into what we call a sea of delocalized electrons and this is why graphite can conduct electricity isn't that cool Graphite is also used as a lubricant because it's soft and so its general properties are lubricants, pencils, uh, electrodes for conductivity. Okay. You also need to know silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide also has a tetrahedral framework like diamond, but in silicon dioxide, each silicon is bonded to four oxygens by strong covalent bonds, and each oxygen is bonded to two silicons by strong covalent bonds. This is also a giant tetrahedral lattice. So like diamond, it is very hard and has a high melting point and is completely insoluble in water. Key okay. ionic structure. Well, in ionic structures, the simple structure that we've looked at already is sodium chloride. And in sodium chloride, each positive ion is surrounded by negative ions. It is surrounded by six negative ions forming a cubic shape. This negative ion will be surrounded by six positive ions forming a cubic shape, etc, etc. And this one will be surrounded by positive ions as well. So this forms a giant cubic lattice. So remember
Each positive is surrounded by six negatives. And each negative is surrounded by six positives. Therefore, you get the formula NaCl. The ratio is one to one. This is a high melting point. It's crystalline. But because of the charged ions, it is soluble in water. And when it dissolves in water or molten, so when dissolved or molten, it conducts electricity. because of the negative charges being able to move. Once you've allowed them at the lattice, they can move, and when they can move, they can act as charge conductors, and therefore you can conduct electricity. Okay, so in general, ionic, giant covalent, and molecular. Now, molecular compounds are also called simple covalent. So, melting point. Um, hardness. Conductivity, solubility, volatility. Volatility means how easily does it become a gas. So, melting point of ionic structures, high. Giant covalent, very high. Simple molecular, low, very low. Examples of simple molecular would be anything from like carbon dioxide, water, wax, sugar, stearic acid we use the, um, in the practical. Hardness. These are hard. They are brittle. They are crystalline. These are usually hard. Graphite is an exception. Usually very hard in diamond's case. And these guys, they're just not hard at all. They're quite soft usually. Conduct. These guys conduct when molten or in solution. Only graphite conducts for the giant covalent guys. And these never conduct. Solubility. These guys are soluble in water usually. These guys are never usually soluble in water, they're too big. And these ones are, well, they're usually insoluble in water. There are some exceptions, but generally speaking, they're insoluble usually in water, like wax. The volatility, that means how easily it turns to a gas, very low, low, and very high. In fact, some of these are usually gases. Okay, final part of this little podcast is on moles of compounds. So, we looked at in the past, for example, molar masses. So what's the molar mass of sodium hydroxide? Well, sodium, if you, uh, sodium here, here's my little periodic table. Sodium has a mass of 23, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is 1. Okay, so because of that, 23 plus 16 plus 1, the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40 grams per mole. Number of moles, m, equals mass over the molar mass. If I say to you how many moles are in 10 grams of sodium hydroxide, then your number of moles is mass over molar mass, 
which is 10 over 40, which is 0.25 mole. Okay. What about if I said to you, what is the mass of 0.2 moles of calcium carbonate? Hmm. Mass, therefore, is number of moles times the molar mass. My number of moles is 0.2. My molar mass of calcium carbonate, well, calcium is 40. Carbon is 12. But I have three 16s for oxygen. That gives me a grand total of 100. I can do that because I can count. So if I lose my job as a teacher, I could probably work in a shop. So 0 0.2 times 100 is 20 grams. And that's your answer there. Okay, um, let me do one more little problem uh, on that. Um, how many moles are in... <laughs> 72 grams of water. Okay, number of moles is mass over molar mass. My mass is 72. My molar mass of water, well, molar mass of water is 2 times 1 for the hydrogen, plus 16 for the oxygen. That's going to give me 18 grams per mole. So, mass is 72 grams. Molar mass is 18 grams per mole. Grams cancel out. Moles comes up to the front. I think that's for mole. Okie dokie, that's the end of this little podcast. Good luck in your retest. Cheers.